This video is sponsored by NordVPN. So I'm a real YouTuber now. Hey! In 2020, roughly 1 billion people were older than 60. In 2030, this number will rise to 1.4 billion. Our society becomes older, and aging is associated with a variety of deadly diseases such as heart disease, stroke, or dementia. Aging seems inevitable. Or is it? Scientists might have discovered some ways for which we might slow down aging, or even reverse it. My name is Gimmons, and today we'll talk about the science of aging and how we might live longer. Disclaimer, the research shown in this video is partially brand new and modern aging research is still developing. Therefore, some of the theories presented need more confirmation in human studies. Ready? Let's go! Our story today begins in ancient China. Qing Shi Huan was the first emperor of United China and he was keen to find an elixir of life. So he searched for a magic potion which would make it immortal and invited different guests. You know why not have a healthy diet and exercise and being socially active? Boring! Here, have my vegan pumpkin pie and something I call chai latte. Ah, oh, it's boring. What about you? Uh, I have a mixture containing mercury. Perfect. This didn't work. Other important personalities throughout history also tried to find immortality. Pope Innocent VIII was a scandalous pope who had a couple of illegitimate children. Eight years into his papacy, Innocent VIII fell sick. Afraid of dying, he did something everyone would do. He had three boys to drain their bloods. The Pope thought that young blood will make him younger. But instead of making him immortal, he made this story immortal as he died from blood poisoning after the procedure. In the first half of the 20th century, scientists became more systematic in their approach to study aging. But still there were some mistakes. Alexander Bogdanov tried to reverse aging by blood transfusion and Paul Nehans injected cells into many famous people, including Winston Churchill, Charles de Gaulle and Pope Pius XII. This likely also didn't work. but they found something else. Scientists studied how different organisms become older, and they found that it didn't matter if they studied single cell microbes or humans. The risk of dying gets greater as we get older. Well, that's not really a surprise, right? But then the scientists discovered that the lifespan of animals can be increased up to 50 to 300% by putting them on certain diets. This effect was demonstrated in yeast, cells, flies, worms, mice or even monkeys. And in general, the more simple the organism, the greater the effect. Then in 1988, scientists want to find out if they also can genetically modify organisms to live longer. By making certain genetic modifications, they could generate worms which lived much longer than normal. Scientists were onto something. Around the same time, scientists started to understand how aging really works and they defined what we now call the hallmarks of aging. Our cells have to stick with us throughout our lives. The older we get, cells in our body become more and more damaged and their function is compromised. This starts with the genetic information in a cell, or DNA. As we get older, our cells are exposed to UV radiation and certain chemicals and as a result some parts of our DNA is changed. These changes can then destroy genes and mess with the function of the cell. And although cells have ways to compensate or even repair damages in their DNA, this process isn't perfect. And as a consequence, more and more cells become dysfunctional as we get older. At a certain point there is no return and cells become what we call zombie cells. Zombie cells are senescent cells which do not really serve a function anymore and stay in our body for a quite long time and they actually can harm us. You see, zombie cells have an abnormal metabolism and they are often leaky and release substances into their environments. In aging organs, it has been shown that zombie cells can release cytokines, which attract the immune system. The immune system is then falsely tricked and thinks something is wrong and starts to cause inflammation. Inflammation then damages the zombie cells, but also the surrounding normal tissue. So then not only zombie cells, but also surrounding cells are being attacked and the whole tissue is damaged. This process, together with the fact that zombie cells also can release other substances, might be one explanation why aging is associated with a chronic inflammation of the joints or hardening of arteries. So to summarize, everything becomes worse as we get older. But since we start to understand how aging works, are there any ways for which we can stop these processes? I mean, that's a rhetorical question. As we've seen, aging means that cells become more damaged and dysfunctional until we have zombie cells. So what can we do about them? One approach would be to simply remove old cells. In 2011, scientists tried to slow down aging in old mice. 
By genetically modifying the mice, scientists could selectively destroy old cells. It was found that mice which didn't contain zombie cells lived longer than untreated mice. In the subsequent years, other studies came to the same conclusion. And even healthy animals live longer if we remove zombie cells. Based on this observation, scientists have developed a new class of drugs called senolytics. Senolytics are molecules which destroy zombie cells while keeping normal cells intact. Dazatinib is a drug which has been originally developed to remove cancer cells, but has also been shown to destroy zombie cells and fat tissue. Another plant-derived supplement called quercetin has been found to target zombie cells in the skin. By combining both drugs, scientists were able to alleviate age-related disorders in mice. In 2018, another senolytic called Navitoclax has been shown to remove zombie cells in the brain. And then another study was shown that this drug can be used to improve the memory in mice which suffer from Alzheimer's disease. So this in itself might be revolutionary, but there are a few buts. As you might have realized by now, synolytics only act in certain tissues. This is because zombie cells are very different from each other, depending on where in the body they arise. So there is not a single drug which potentially targets all the kinds of different zombie cells in our body, but they only act selectively. And although this makes the development of therapies a bit more difficult, there have been first successes. Synolytics have been shown to prolong the lifespan of mice by 25%. And although it is difficult to perform human studies, there are some first clinical trials. Synolytics have been used to treat patients who suffer from idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. This disease causes scarring in the lungs and is partially caused by aging cells. Synolytics were administered to 14 patients and was found that over the course of some weeks their physical fitness improved. Huh? What is that? A chai latte? Quin Chi Huang and Pope Innocent VIII, you're back? That's right, you scientists always like to make things complicated, but sometimes it's easy. For example, when it comes to your cybersecurity. And with that, welcome to today's sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN provides you with the best protection when you go online. With a simple click, you can access over 5,600 servers in 59 countries, while AES-256 encryption keeps you safe. NordVPN has also recently launched its threat protection feature. This helps you to block trackers, malicious ads, or harmful websites, meaning that you can really do a proper search for the elixir of life without having to fear getting your computer infected. So so go to NordVPN slash Sanceroli and use the code Sanceroli. This gets you a NordVPN two-year plan and four months for free. And the amazing thing is that there is also a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Go to NordVPN slash Sanceroli and use the code Sanceroli. Where was I? Sign is slowing down aging. Right. But there is also another approach which might revolutionize aging research. Instead of removing old cells, why not make old cells younger again? We've once covered how we could activate youthful genes on a larger scale in this video. Now, however, we take a bit of a different approach. Scientists are trying to find out if we could activate isolated single genes to make us younger. We could possibly do that by activating so-called transcription factors. Transcription factors are genes in the DNA which have the main task to activate other genes. The transcription factor NANOC, for example, has been found to influence many genes in young cells. So scientists try to find out if we can reactivate NANOC in order to make cells younger. They reactivated NANOC in old mice and found that their muscle cells became more youthful. More importantly though, they also reported an increased number of muscle stem cells, which are very important if we want to have strength in our muscles. In this regard, there has not been a human trial yet, as this is a form of gene therapy and in general, gene therapies are risky. By using a similar method, scientists recently changed the skin cells of middle-aged people in the petri dish. They found that the treatment made the skin cells 30 years younger in terms of the gene activity. In another study, scientists tried to restore the vision of aged mice. They administered three youthful genes called OCT4, SOX2 and KL4 into the eyes of mice. These youthful genes then activated other youthful genes and started to restore the vision in those mice. So yeah, many of these studies are very promising and very new, so let's see what happens next. But you know, we do not really need to wait for scientists to develop some form of fancy drugs in the lab. There is something we can do to slow down aging and live longer. All of us. And what we can do is that we can influence our lifestyle. In the 1930s, biochemist Clive McKay discovered that rats who underwent fasting lived 33% longer than previously thought possible. When scientists later analyzed the cells from multiple tissues, they found that they looked much younger than they should. 
And this is why diet is the first intervention we can take if we want to slow down aging. Caloric restriction is a form of diet where we reduce our caloric intake by 30 to 40 percent. And very important, it does not mean that we should starve ourselves, but instead that we reduce the number of calories we take in at certain days in a week. It has been shown that caloric restriction kicks off emergent responses in our body. Especially some cells get stressed and start to activate pathways which lead to what we call autophagy. Autophagy is a process where cells destroy themselves in a controlled manner. Preclinical studies show that caloric restriction increases the lifespan of various animals by 50 to 300%. This sounds huge, but also remember the more complex the organism, the smaller the effect. In humans the data is more limited as those studies take a very long time and are expensive. But there is one region in Japan called Okinawa where people naturally practice some forms of caloric restriction. And they are also the world record holders when it comes to life expectancy. In Okinawa the mean lifespan is 85 for men and 90 years for women. And this is roughly 15 years more than average worldwide and makes them the world record holder when it comes to aging. And this is 6 and 10 years longer than the average adult lives in the US respectively. And other observational randomized controlled studies have shown that humans live 1 to 5 years longer if they follow caloric restriction. So this is impressive data but you might also say that restricting yourself in your diet in this form kind of sucks. So is there any other way to kick off autophagy in old cells? And again, rhetorical question, obviously there is. There is another way to potentially live longer for our diets. Intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting means that we fast two days a week or daily for 14 to 16 hours. Intermittent fasting and caloric restriction has been shown to have similar effects, so zombie cells are cleared more effectively. And more importantly, intermittent fasting also changes our metabolism. Besides diet, there's also another thing we can do. Exercise. Exercising isn't only important to keep us in shape, but also might help to slow down aging. A meta-study tried to find out whether exercising is sufficient to destroy zombie cells. Overall, it was found the more physically active a person is, the fewer zombie cells they have especially in the immune system. This might also boost our immune system and make us less sick. In another study, blood samples from 102 adults were obtained and analyzed. The participants then had to do some exercises and their fitness was assessed, and there were questions about their sports habits. It was found that those who are physically more active also had more active and younger immune cells. Aging is a process which seems to be inevitable until now. By understanding how aging works on a cellular level, we can find ways to intervene and slow down aging. There are many ways for which we could do that. We could slow down aging by removing old zombie cells or by making them younger. But also changing our diets and exercising helps us to live longer. But this is actually only a tiny fraction of what is possible. And with that, I could start a video series on aging. Would you be interested in that? And also feel free to comment what do you actually do to stay young. And also like and subscribe and hit the bell button and do all the other fancy YouTube stuff or don't do it. It's a free country. You can also comment whatever you like. And with that, I'll see ya. If you want to know how we can control the activity of our genes to slow down aging or how to change your brain to become smarter, you might like these videos.